Is there a plant in your garden that just produces so much abundance? For me, it's pumpkin. Hi, I'm Moira Gamble from Our Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute and welcome into my permaculture garden. Now, pumpkin I absolutely love for so many reasons. Well, one, all of the pumpkin that's growing in my garden has self-seeded and every year I get a massive abundance of beautiful <laughs> pumpkins. This one is so heavy. Massive amounts of, of food that stores for a really long time and it's beautiful food that can be used in all different sorts of, of cooking. But the other thing that's fantastic about this plant, well there's many things, is that um, all of the plant is edible. So all of these young shoots, the young leaves and even the older leaves are all edible. So you know every day I just come along and snip off some of these young shoots and just go all the way around to stop it completely taking over gardens and that's really good in a stir fry. Um, the young leaves also are good in a stir fry. Once you start to get to some of the bigger leaves um, then you might want to cook them up a little bit longer maybe add them into soups or stews or curries. Um, you can even just steam them for a few minutes uh, maybe you know five minutes or so until they're soft because a little bit of cooking makes these little prickles um, soften. So then what you do is you put a little bit of maybe some vegetables or rice or whatever you've got inside and then you just roll it up as a little wrap and then dip it in some dipping sauce and then you've got a great I don't know gluten-free uh, wrap that's just straight from outside your door. So as well as the leaves to eat and the pumpkin which you can eat the skin, it's a really, you know, that's where all the extra phytonutrients are. You can eat the seeds, which are really great as a, as a protein. And, you know, sometimes we scoop out the seeds and we toast them up and put a bit of tamari on. That's really, really nice. Uh, sometimes even, you know, if you do want to take the skin off, you can then cook that up as like a little uh, pumpkin skin chip, which is really, really nice. And you can use that as a dipper as well. I mean, if you're making a pumpkin soup, there's no need to actually peel it and take the seeds out. You can just toss the whole lot into the soup just like that, which is wonderful. Um, so, you know, one, one way that I tell that it's ready, when it starts to get a little bit of um, coloration on it like this, and also when it starts to turn from really shiny, it starts to get this greyness about it too, a dullness on the skin, and then you know that it's ready um, to ready to pick. Gosh, it's like doing weightlifting. Now, the other thing that you can eat, of course, um, are the flowers. So this one here is a male flower, and you can tell the difference. I'm just trying to find a female flower here, I think. Well, it hasn't actually fully flowered yet, but you can see below this flower, there is this little kind of pregnant belly. So you know that's the female one. And with this one here, it's not. It just goes straight onto a stalk. So you can pick up these, and there's a whole variety of different sizes in here. You can use these either in salads or the bigger ones. You can stuff with, you know, different sorts of rice and vegetables as well and have, you know, really gourmet meals. So that's from the food perspective. All of those different parts of the plant are absolutely edible. But also, as you can see behind me, this plant is actually creating an incredible um, ground cover, like a living mulch. And all of this material, as I start to trim it back, can be used as a chop and drop mulch in and around fruit trees. Um, and I've got a new section of garden that I'm trying to get prepared. It's incredibly hard soil. So at the moment, any chop and drop materials, I'm just kind of layering on there so that they'll just gradually kind of um, start to open up that soil just through the protection they provide. So, so many different things from organic matter, compost material, getting your garden started, um, all the food sources. Pumpkin just provides this absolute abundance and so I really encourage you to to go out and look at your pumpkin a little bit differently but also to look at all your plants differently and thinking from 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 root and to the tip and the flowers and what are all the different parts of the plant that can be edible because simply by shifting our perception we can be growing 10 times the amount of food that we we think we're growing or that we even think is possible and so it's a really and, you know, just that simple shift, I think, is a really important thing that we need to be doing, particularly as we're trying to find a way to become more locally resilient and we're really trying to get thriving edible gardens happening. See what's really in your garden, in all the different food sources, and start to experiment with different ways of, of, of preparing all these different foods. So thank you for joining me back in my garden. Um, and also, I always put in some links below to ways that you can get your permaculture garden started.
um, easily and also a, a four-part series. There's links there to that which explain what is permaculture and, and how to weave it into your life and your livelihood. All right, take care. See you.